Welcome back to the channel and in today's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do weight proximity in Blender. So this is a cool way we can dynamically affect our weighted groups in Blender to in this example here that I'm going to show you um, we can see we have this object here and it's influencing um, the, the weights here to enact the displacement wherever this object is close to it in proximity. So there are a million different applications for this in Blender. This is just one we're gonna be doing here. So this is not like making a final scene or anything. I'm just kind of showing you guys the principles here, how you can apply it to things. So this is a very powerful little video. You're gonna learn a lot in this and hopefully you guys can apply this into some of your um, projects that you're working on. So let's jump into this and I'll show you how to do weights dynamically. So I know this might be a little bit annoying, but I'm just gonna start by making a little example scene just so you can follow along. And um, then we'll get into the vertex proximity stuff. So this is gonna be really simple. It'll only take us a minute or two. So um, let's start by selecting our uh, default cube over here. Let's just tab into edit mode and let's just go R45 in our front of graphic view. Then we're just gonna go shift A. Let's just quickly add in a cylinder S to scale it down and then SZ to scale it up. Um, doesn't have to be exactly, it's just, you know, keep this really simple. And then let's just grab this edge here and this edge here. Control B to create a bevel, roll the middle mouse button. Something like that looks fine. And then just go Control L with that active. Shift D to duplicate R90 in the front of graphic view. And then Shift D R Z 90 and press enter. And now we've just modeled this really simple shape. And if you want to, you can select the box here and just go, um, let's just go Control B or Command B and create a bevel on that. So just we have like this basic shape here. It just kind of looks fun, okay? Very, very simple. Let's just go S.5, hit enter, and then go Control A, and also just apply the scale. So we're gonna grab that guy and move him over to the side. Let's go Shift A. Let's just quickly add in another cube. In edit mode, just right click and go subdivide, and let's give that, mm, I'm gonna go 12 subdivisions, and let's just go Shift Alt S and then round that out. So you're probably wondering, why didn't I just add in a UV sphere? And the reason is, is because the UV sphere has a bit of a kind of weird topology, especially towards the ends here of those triangles. So this is just a bit more of a better way of doing it, in my opinion. So with that done, let's tell ourselves what we want to do here so we can understand, okay? We want to be able to, in this example, for, let's just give ourselves something to do. Let's just say this sphere over here, we wanna to go to our modifier properties. We wanna just give it a displacement, right? And with a displacement, you obviously have to go give it a map, go to your um, texture properties, and just go ahead and change the type to something like clouds, right? Here we have the classic sort of displacement setting in Blender. Now, what if we wanted this to be a perfectly smooth sphere, like we have when we turn this off, and only when this thing is in proximity to it, we make it um, enact this displacement. So to do that, we need to go over to, and um, with any object you wanna do the sort of dynamic weights to, you need to go over to your object data properties. You need to go ahead and create a vertex group and in edit mode, you wanna say which ones will be eligible for this. So this is all the eligible verts. So we're gonna select everything in this case, and we're gonna go ahead and assign it because everything here should be able to be affected by this when the time and the proximity is right. Okay, it'll make sense in a second, but now we have that group. And now we need to go over to our modifiers and let's go add modifier and let's give it the weight, um, vertex weight proximity. Now this needs to be above the modifier that we're gonna be utilizing it in. So put it at the top. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the vertex group and then select that group we created. So now we have the group there selected. And then we need to go ahead and grab the target objects. We're gonna click on eyedropper. And in this case, we're gonna go with the cube thing we created here, right? You could use anything, use the Suzanne monkey head if you want to, okay? So let's just quickly grab the object here and under the modifiers here, let's just go down to our displace. And now under the vertex group, we also need to make sure that it's using that vertex group. So now at the moment, nothing is happening because at the moment we actually need to um, go to the proximity mode here, make a geometry. And we need to tell it how to use the lowest and the highest value. And I think an easier way for you to really understand this is instead of me messing around with this, just to actually go object and then go into the weight paint mode. And over here you can see um, we got these influences. So let's actually back in object mode, just grab this guy and move it a little bit closer. Grab this and then go into weight paint. So let's come over here and let's make the highest value, maybe something like 0.5 and then the lowest value 0.6, a little bit higher. So now, for example, you can see that between the lowest and the highest range, this is what we have selected here. 
as soon as we take this lowest and we bring it equal or to or below the highest value here, these two values flip, which is not what we want. In fact, there might be some situations where you do want that. So now if you move this around, that all kind of disappears, but it just kind of looks a lot cooler if we actually have this lowest value a little bit higher, and then we kind of have this sort of um, distribution here, which looks really cool. So now this um, displacement here is driving this, um, or this um, vertex proximity is driving this displacement. So we can now grab this object, and we can go G, move it around and move it away. Now as it comes closer, we have this cool effect. You can now simply, that you have this set up, do this to anything. So you can now select your sphere. Um, let's go ahead and give that a, maybe go to our particles and give it a particle, give it a hair. Maybe bring the hair down a little bit. Under the children, make it interpolated. And now let's go have some fun and go down to the vertex groups and then go to density and select group. So now we have this over here and that just looks absolutely hilarious. Um, maybe let's just bring that length down a bit. So now we are also grabbing this and not only are we displacing, but we're um, creating hair. So for some reason it has a little bit of a bug where it won't update that in real time. So I have to kind of move this over here, grab this and then tab back in and out but there's probably some sort of way you can cache that out. I've never really run into this bug before. It might just be a bug in this build of Blender. So I have to apologize. When I was doing my video editing, it actually just occurred to me that it's probably not a bug. And I realized what you have to do to be able to get the hair particles to follow along in real time. Um, make sure with your hair particles that under the emission here, this is something called source. And under there, you just wanna go ahead and tick use modifier stack. That way, um, it will be updating the particles in real time. So just keep that in mind if you're following Blender. along. But you can see here how we're dynamically driving this. But anyway, I'm just gonna get rid of the particles. Um, that just kind of gives you an idea how awesome this sort of um, weight vertex proximity stuff is. So if you guys have enjoyed this, um, let me know, give a like, subscribe, check out some other content. And I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.